I'm Mike, and today, after many requests, pets. Specifically, is the concept of pets vegan? Are we just farming them for an oxytocin rush and then telling ourselves they're having a good time? Or are they key to the human experience and help people empathize with animals? And finally, can cats and dogs be fed a vegan diet? This topic is a hard one for vegans because we generally love animals and love being around them a lot. Probably too much. From a selfish perspective, we get a lot of benefits from having pets, less anxiety, more comfort and happiness, and as this one study concluded, they can even help you better recover from rejection. But what about from the animal's perspective? Let's just jump right into the big philosophical question. Does having a pet get in the way of veganism and the idea of not exploiting, not controlling, and not inducing suffering upon animals? From a purist perspective of animal suffering prevention, it would be easy to say no. Sure, in a vacuum, maybe a great way to reduce pet suffering is to not have pets at all. You won't be taking away their reproductive abilities by castrating or neutering them, there's no chance of you neglecting them, and you're not taking any animals out of their natural habitat. While these are valid points, I don't think it is constructive to integrate these viewpoints into wider vegan thinking, not only because it depends on the animal species, but because there are already so many things that vegans can't do which prevents people from becoming vegan in the first place. There are things you can't eat, things you can't wear, and those are pretty clear cut and shouldn't be compromised. But to say that you can't have pets is a little much, especially when in the US, for example, 60% of people have some type of pet. To get a really good answer on this, we'd essentially have to calculate the impossible, which would be figuring out how much animal death and suffering would be prevented by vegans spreading a no pet message versus how much animal death and suffering would not be prevented if we scare everybody away by presenting ourselves as an anti-pet cult. One thing is for sure though, pets play an undeniable role in connecting humans with animals and making them empathize with all animals, including the ones that are regularly eaten. For that reason and so many more, I think pets are awesome and absolutely fit within a vegan ideology. All of this being said, vegans need to get their cruelty-free pet game on lock. Let's do this. Firstly, it is definitely not in line with basic vegan logic to buy from a breeder. The commodification of animals within the breeding industry, the cruelty, all the forced reproduction, it just goes too deep, and there's really no justification with how many animals there are available to rescue. But what's the point in rescuing a single animal if you end up feeding it hundreds of chickens and dozens of pigs and other animals over the next decade? This is the most overlooked aspect of being a vegan pet owner. The pet is an extension of yourself. If you have a pet piranha, for example, every fish that you feed it, you, in a sense, might as well be eating because you are adding to that animal footprint as the person who decided to get a piranha. Yes, the animals that you feed your pet are not going directly into your body, but you essentially need to draw a giant circle around you and whatever type of animal you have and take responsibility for the animals that are getting fed to either one of you. And I know some of you are like, ah, oh, but I already have a cat from before I went vegan. And don't worry, we'll take a good level-headed look at how to solve that in a bit. But first, I have to ask the question, can you even own an animal? Are they even yours? Quick answer, this idea is generally why vegans opt out of the idea of animal ownership and instead go for the companionship title. Let's be honest though, this is really not a two-way street. There are certainly some animals that own their humans. Now I can't go all the way through this video without asking the question, are we still exploiting our pets even though we think we're giving them a great life and that we view them as companions? It's a sort of an abstract idea, but vegans don't consume byproducts from animals to avoid animal exploitation. But in a sense, we do get byproducts from our pets, albeit not physical, but for example, we do use them for oxytocin or joy or comfort. And the truth is, how do you really know how much comfort and joy an animal is experiencing? Unless you have, of course, a thermal imaging camera and a veterinary scientist, then you know exactly what they're feeling. The point is, vegans need to examine this and their implications. For example, you should not keep an animal alive past the point where it's suffering just because it might make you feel good and because you love it, you still have to look at it in a level-headed way. Okay, now to the logistical question, can dogs or even cats be vegan? We know they're not herbivores, but let's start with dogs. 
From Pet MD, Dr. Jennifer Coates writes, quote, The answer is yes, dogs can eat a vegetarian diet and thrive, even veganism, consuming a diet that does not include any animal products, though a little trickier is possible for dogs. Of course, while you can find people that will disagree with this, there's no denying that amazing results have been achieved. I usually stay away from anecdotes, but this one from a statistical perspective is undeniable. Bramble, the vegan border collie, set the Guinness Book of World Records in 2002 for the oldest living dog at 27 years old. 14 years later, Bramble is still number five. Given the minute fraction of vegan dogs across the world, that is an undeniable fact about how vegan dogs can thrive. And I also happen to live with a 16 year old vegan dog named Milo, and let's just say he's doing a heck of a lot better than most 16 year old dogs, which are dead. He's a little special, but then again, he's always been a little special. Like any doggy diet, a vegan diet can be done wrong. It's best to give your dog a supplement with, or food with L-carnitine and taurine to cover their bases, though they can make their own taurine with enough protein in their diet, which happens to be 25 or more grams per 1,000 calories. So don't feed them a high carb fruitarian diet. Back to Dr. Coates, quote, The right balance of different plant-based sources of protein, example beans, corn, soy, and whole grains can still provide the needed amino acids. There are just plenty of vegan dog foods out there that meet the Association of American Feed Control Officials guidelines, but yes, you should definitely still take your dog for regular checkups. Final point, there seems to be an unproportional shaming toward vegans that feed their dogs a vegan diet. Sure, if you feed them a crappy vegan diet will shorten their lifespan, but so will being overweight, like 45% of the dogs in the US. But no one seems to be telling the literally tens of millions of people that have an overweight dog in their home, hey, did you know you may be literally killing your pet with kindness? But Kibbles loves food. Is not an excuse to kill your dog prematurely. I also find it equally hazardous to be regularly feeding your dog the diseased and hormone-pumped, not-fit-for-consumption animal parts, as well as the processed foods that go into standard dog food. When it comes to cats, though, the pushback is even stronger, and understandably so. Cats are obligate carnivores, meaning they require certain nutrients from animals. For example, they cannot make taurine at all, unlike dogs, along with a lot of other nutrients that are only found in animals. To the point where most experts definitely advise against it. In the words of Lou Olson, PhD, an author on the subject, quote, trying to feed a cat a vegan diet would be like me feeding my horses meat. You're taking a whole species of animal and trying to force it to eat something that it is not designed to handle. But does that mean it can't be done without inflicting suffering? Well, this certainly hasn't stopped countless numbers of people from putting their cats on a vegan diet with the several different types of vegan cat food available. Some of which, like many products in the US, failed to meet their advertised level of nutrients. How well does a vegan cat food that meets guidelines fare? Well, in this year-long study, though none of the cats reached a taurine deficiency status, three out of the 17, or about 18% of them, ended up with low taurine levels. All of the cat's B12 indicator levels remained fine, but they didn't test for everything that a cat needs. Being a vegan with a cat also puts you in between a rock and a hard place, literally in the sense that the low pH of a vegan diet can lead to blockages in the urethra of your cat. This is more of an issue for male cats than female cats. The pH of your cat's urine must be monitored and you can also add acidifiers like vitamin C to your cat's water. I think it's important to tackle this with a level head. If you are a vegan, you do not want to be exploiting animals or supporting the livestock industry by buying pet food, but you also don't want to be causing suffering for your cat. This presents two options. Number one, feed your cat a vegan diet, monitor them regularly with their pH, and take them for checkups, and possibly put them at a higher risk of some issues. Or number two, figure out a way to get meat without increasing animal suffering or supporting the livestock industry. One solution that has worked for people is talking to a local restaurant and getting their meat-based waste, but oh wait, you're a cat person, so you're probably an introvert. Other options could be be a freegan for your cat and dumpster dive for meat, or you can go the roadkill route, which is pretty gross. All of these things I would be against a human doing for health and ethical reasons, but a cat, 
that might be suffering otherwise, go for it. And finally, again, there is no criticism of the widespread poor dietary practices for cats. For example, it's, yeah, it's not natural to feed them no meat, but it's also not natural to feed them a fish that is 10 to 100 times their size and loaded with mercury, aka tuna. In this study, cats that ate the tuna diet did not just have elevated levels of mercury, they also walked less, vocalized less, and played less. Yes, played less. Now, I can't cover every species here, but the final point is that most animals are not gonna do that well as pets. We have had a symbiotic relationship with dogs for 16 to 32,000 years, which means they are quite well adjusted. Some scientists even say that we have yet to fully domesticate cats, and they've only been living in and around humans for about 9,000 years, which is why if you die in your home, they will eat you. Man's best frenemy for you. In conclusion, give me $10 million to create the most well-tested, best vegan cat food ever made. Now, in all seriousness, it's probably better if you don't get a new indoor cat. If you already have one, just do your best to reduce animal suffering on all counts. And if you have a dog, just make sure you have a certified food that does it in terms of nutritional value and get regular checkups. And maybe they will reach 16 like Milo currently is or 27 like Bramble did. As for rescuing other species, just be aware of the animal's needs, make sure you have year-round outdoor space, and make sure you start an Instagram account showing people how awesome your baby pig, goat, or whatever is so they stop eating as many animals. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to let me know down below if you agree or disagree with any of my pet philosophies. All right, thank you for watching.